Hi, it's Graham here and I've been lucky enough to get myself out for another wild camp. I'm on Buick Moor and I think there's a real sense of history here. Within a few square miles you've got hill forts, prehistoric rock art, you've got a farm that was abandoned at the end of, uh, sorry, at the start of the First World War. You've got Neolithic cairns. Most of the time when I'm on Buick Moor I go for the, the, the standout stars. I go for, uh, you know, have a look at Catarin Hall, the mysterious cave on the moor. Uh, and you know I go to Blair Weary and uh, often camp there but there's, I think there's a lot more to Buick Moor than I haven't explored and looking at the map there's, there's crags and waterfalls and there's a hill fort I've never been to so we're going to try and explore all these and at the minute I've no idea where I'm going to end up pitching uh, so I'm out with a friend tonight and uh, this time it's the semi-legendary Mountain Hopper 57 there he is now Adrian's channel's really taken off. He's got uh, he's got loads more subscribers and watch time than me. One of his videos had seventy thousand views, and uh, I'm, I'm not at all jealous. Not not at all. Last time we were here at Blair Weary, I promised Adrian a, a brew under the cover, uh, but as I said, the moor was so flooded we couldn't get here, and he's he's never stopped going on about it since. So we're going to rectify that now and stop for a, a swig of water and a coffee. I guess this is probably for shooting parties, uh, but we're grateful for it. I'm going to make use of it now. Individual uh, burial kist here, a tiny little burial chamber, and I think there's another one over here. You see the, the three sides of it, and in the middle there, I think is a, a capstone for one of the kists. And I think these kists look really small compared to burial plots nowadays because I think the Bronze Age some people were, were laid to rest in the, the fetal position, and uh, maybe that's what happened here. I don't know, but maybe it was. But this was excavated, it's been excavated twice. It was excavated um, by an antiquary called, oh, I think Greenwell, in 1865. And he found uh, pottery and jade necklaces and stuff. And it was excavated again, um, more recently in 1996, by Beckinsall and, and, and Hewitt. And uh, Beckinsall was the name you'll recognize if you're into some of the A smash and lonely place on the moor. Now it's there wasn't a lot of artifacts uh, in 1996 when it was excavated, and it's uh, but it's it's a burial chamber on an open moorland with easy access to you know curiosity seekers, shall we say, throughout the, the, the centuries. And it's said that the Rogerson family, uh, who had Blair Weary up until the Second World War, uh, from the moor itself uh, amassed a, a, a quite good collection of archaeological artefacts and flint and jade and stuff like that. But anyway, it's a fascinating place, but we're going to leave it now and head up towards, uh, there's a hill fort up here, uh, we want to go and explore, and uh, the crags as well, so let's crack on. looks like we're in the hill fort now because there's a big ridge and, and, and ditch here and uh, you could easily bivy there maybe you get a tent in as well uh, as we 
go a bit further up you can see an entrance between two um, mounds here encircling the centre of the hill fort encircling most of the hill fort. Uh, let's have a look and, and see what's over here. This is the direction that the crags are in. There's my rucksack there. And wow. Look at that. When you come over here, there's a view of the little stream down there and the crags just there. That is just incredible. I'm definitely going down to explore that. I found Adrian, he'd been exploring this stream. But holy moly, this place is what a find. It's absolutely beautiful. I'm thinking about pitching my tent just there, next to the stream and next to this wonderful looking crag here. I'm gonna explore further down here, because it's, oh, oh yeah boys alive. I think that's a, a ruin tree. A lovely little mountain ash. It's obviously a well loved place because this uh, the wooden bridges are brand new. Look at this folks, it's like something out of Tolkien, it's like Rivendell or something. Imagine hobbits and elves here. I want to say thank you to Noah who bought me a coffee this week. Now Noah's trying to get his partner Rowena out on a wild camp. And I don't know how keen she is, but Rowena, get yourself out on a wild camp with Noah. You know it makes sense. Just do it. Have a watch of some of my videos Rowena, if you don't believe how good wild camping can be. gear and uh, me under this 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 overhang now because um, the forecast was for zero precipitation and despite that it's now just um, the skies have opened a bit and I haven't brought a raincoat um, which was stupid I'm hoping it's just a spring rain and it'll pass but the cloud covers total at the minute So for all that valley was really beautiful. I mean, it really beautiful. I think it's even the rival of the hen hole, if I'm honest. I didn't feel comfortable pitching there and there were some decent tent pitches. It just felt as if it was very beloved, you know, by the landowner. A lot of those bridge structures were brand new and there was a sign saying private and there was even a, a foldy up picnic table there. And I think out of respect for the landowner, um, I, d I don't think I would go back and camp there, I, I really wouldn't. And uh, I say out, out of respect for the landowner, what I also mean in that statement is that I think there's a high chance of being asked to move it on. But absolutely gorgeous to have seen it, a, a real hidden gem. Emergency call. 
tell you what, Graham, I was just about to jump down onto it. I think it's waiting from under me. Mm -hmm. So there were some tremendous 10 pitches down there, but no signal. And tonight it's important to have a signal. So we're heading back to Blair Weary and from there, we're gonna, I had think, head for the, the, the first hill fort that we had a look at. And probably camp there, fingers crossed. We're back at the hill fort folks and we're on one of the, 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 the lower ledges of it, lower ridges, because we got on top there and it was just blown a hooli and um, it's, it's not comfortable camping in those conditions. Um, and it, despite the weather forecast, it looks like there could be a storm, some black clouds blown over from the Cheviot. And I think I'm going to have to just get my tent up quickly because um, I haven't got a rain jacket. I need to get inside the tent and the tent is an inner pitch first. so. We'll, we'll get it up. folks I've got the fear and got cut a one tonight again and uh, I've got my summer bag in there and it's 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 heap lie on in there it's a bit of a mess at the minute I need to tidy it up but uh, just down there is the valley we were exploring this afternoon so actually I think I've got a pretty tremendous view from my camp spot here I'm pretty pleased with it Hi folks, I just wanted to give a mention to a lad called Chris Ed who got in touch with us. He's starting off a new bushcraft school based in Northumberland. It's called Northern Woodcraft. Uh, that's the logo there. I think he'll be taking booking soon. So keep a look out for it and I hope to go along myself in August and see what it's all about. And uh, Mountain Hopper 57, Adrian, is uh, he's got the, the old Tartman bivvy, the master of the Tartman bivvy that he is. And he looks like he's got a Dutch hooped bivy under there with uh, a 1.8 by 2.5 top. There's plenty of room in there. It looks great. And I'm actually tempted to buy one of these bivvies myself. It looks great. So I've got nothing posh for me bait tonight, folks. I've got breaded cod goujons in ciabatta with homemade aioli and rocket. So fish finger sandwiches, in other words. Folks, this sandwich is absolutely champion. Oh, that is better. Dry socks and tent boots. I'm going to be cosy tonight. So I'm home now. Um, Adrian's family's okay. It was still the right decision to come away though. He had, he had to do it. And uh, and I get to spend the night with a beautiful woman unexpectedly. So it's not all bad. And I took a beer out with us tonight and it seems a shame not to honor, honor it by having that beer now. It's got, um, got the Cheviot Wild Goats on and that's why I bought it. It's called Cheviot Cosa by the Cheviot Brewery. Oh, I'm getting 1970s Eagle Eye action, man. A tramp's head and crisps. It is really nice. Ah, so tonight didn't end up how I expected it to, and although I didn't get a full camp, thanks for coming along. It was still a great trip for me and I'll see you on the next one.